Welcome back to Copperhead Customs. Today we're back on this, our blown 392 Hemi 1955 DeSoto. So stick around to see what we do to it today. So yes, this is our 1955 DeSoto with a supercharged 392 Hemi in it that we picked up last week. Now this car, when it was in America, was owned by Gas Monkey Garage. Today, what is the plan? Well, if you've seen last week's episode, you would have seen that when I pulled this sign writing off, it pulled all the paint. So we had to try to save all this by patinering it all and re-airbrushing the dices in. So we're going to continue with that and make that look even better by scuffing the body completely down, adding some more patina, and we may even add a bit of airbrushing on to some of the signs to make them pop a bit more, giving it that vintage gasser look that has a fully patinaed paint. The other thing that happened last week, if you were watching, was that we started having some coughing and splattering and like a bit of a run out of petrol condition, but that could also be that it was flooding itself. So we need to address what's going on in that. So we're gonna go through, diagnose some issues in the fuel system, work out if it's flooding or running out, so we'll do some checks of the float levels, the fuel pressure gauge, filter, all these good things, see if the needle and seat may be stuck and see if we can get it to start running nice again. We also want to give the interior a bit of a detail and then, fingers crossed, we'll take it out for a drive. And who knows? We may even get on to lace working the roof, but I doubt it. So if some of that, any of that, or all of that sounds of interest, stick around and enjoy this episode on this blown 392 Hemi 1955 DeSoto. I'm sure we'll end up going out and having some fun. Yesterday, I actually put a bit more, did a little bit more patinering, and I flattened this quarter out like I was saying I wanted to and I think it looks heaps better. So the plan is I'm going to actually add some more patina through it, emphasize it more. Not We're not going to go stupid but we're going to add a bit more around the chrome up the top and we may just put some little dusty bits through here etc. We might have a bit more on the lines, you know, a bit more around the chrome here probably and we'll bring a bit of this sharpness. We might just have a bit of dusting coming down it. Now, this is a different, if you've watched my channel, you'll see I do a hundred different thousand styles of patina. There's no right or wrong way of doing patina. There is multiple, multiple, multiple ways and styles and everything, okay? But in, and each car basically needs a different style. If you've seen on my Chevys, I do it with water sometimes. And, but this particular car, this technique is suiting. We're gonna add some patina onto the bonnet. We're going to do like here, there's some weird stuff happening. We're going to get a bit of patina there. We're going to just, you just got to look around it. So the sun will bake top edges more, okay? It will bake on the horizontals more than the verticals, okay? So the horizontals have to have more patina on them. So that's why we do a bit on the top of the guards. Now the sides may still have a little bit. You've also got to look at where water would run. So off these chrome, like chrome, the chrome will trap water, so it is more likely to rust. Then you've got to look at where the water might drip off the chrome. There might be a, a poke, a point, you know, in the body where the water continually runs. So over years that would might rust a bit more or where water collects. So there are a few things like that. Then the other thing you look at, which we haven't done yet, is wear marks. So getting in and out of this door, both sides, may have a little bit there. So we might add a little bit there. The bottom of this door here, where you're scuffing your feet, you might be rubbing the paint through and it might actually get a little bit of a burn through there. On the front here, the water may run down this little channel when it's parked. So there may be a little bit of rusting going on down into there. So you just gotta think of how the car would weather. Like, like I said, the horizontal panels and the horizontal parts will cop more. 
than a vertical part hence why we've done it on to this little edge and then you look at where the water would run if it's sitting out in the paddock and where the and where the water could be trapped and also where us as humans would be touching the car constantly so just that's how you got to think about doing your patina but with all that said let's scuff sand patina see what we finish up with Okay, so we haven't quite finished. We've still got a, this rear quarter and the door to do on that side, but we've done all the boots nice and flat. The camera probably doesn't show it up perfectly. It does need a good wipe down because we've still got a little bit of dirt still in there. So we need a good wash, but it is actually very matte or a satiny look. Now it's probably satin and it's not so patchy. We may need a little bit more, as you can see, I don't know if you can spot that, but just there, as you can see the difference from there to there. So there may be a little bit more scotching to do, but it's pretty good, the boot and this whole side. And as you can see, we've added a little bit more in, a little bit here, just little bits. Now the camera doesn't bring it up as good as it does in the flesh. It actually, it looks, it looks pretty cool indeed. So... You can see we've got you know a bit on the sides here probably uh, the camera shows a bit less i'd say see here there's some it doesn't really show it up as dark as what it is that's what i think is happening the camera's not showing the patina as dark as it is now on the bonnet we're all done a bit light see it's it really doesn't show it up as good but i think we need to do the bonnet a bit more scotching on the bonnet but other than that i think we're pretty good on our Patina work, getting very close. We got to, like I said, we've got to do the other side door and recorder. Now what I am gonna think I'm going to do is I think we're gonna work these signs a bit more. I think what I'm planning on doing is maybe airbrushing like a border color around them. Not quite sure, maybe orange or I don't know, I'll think about the color, but border, you know, a little, a little line around them that we will fade out as well and maybe see on the other side where they're a bit thinner there may be just some snippets of that outline border color even where there's not so in argument's sake we could have a little bit of the border color still here where the letters faded so i'm thinking of doing that and then i'm humming and hiring about then doing a black shadow to make the letters three-dimensional as well so i think we're going to mess with that tomorrow and then that will really start making these signs look like they were legit the dices we may do something else with the dices yet i'm not sure about i think we might just do the the outline on this and i think that should make them look like really legit sign written so i think we're just going to work on the signs a bit more with the airbrush um and see if we can make them pop so yeah we've nearly done it actually it it's it actually looks really good guys in the, in the flesh it's actually really looking pretty cool it doesn't really look fake it actually looks a little bit legit so i think we've we're saving it it looks a lot shinier 
and a lot more but it looks a lot shinier and glossier through the camera than it does it's actually this really nice matte satin red now with that on and it actually really is popping and once we've done our uh, lace work gloss high gloss lace fancy roof i think the car might pop we'll put some big springs in the front hey anyway let's get on we'll jump around let's get on to doing some carby work okay so we're going to jump around a bit from job to job on this one but our first step we're going to do is we're going to pull the air cleaners off and then we will turn the fuel pump on and just see if we've got anything leaking directly in to the carbies. That will then tell us if we have a stuck float or stuck needle and seat, sorry, uh, etc. And just to um, eliminate that is our first issue. Because if we've got fuel pouring straight in off the fuel pump, then we know we've either got something way too much pressure on the regulator or like I said, a stuck needle and seat. So we will go and turn the ignition on and get the fuel pump cranking. Okay, so we are back. We just turned the ignition on. It was a bit hard to do it all uh, and show you. But there was no fuel pouring down the carbies. Now, <laughs> this is a bit of a, a bear to get under and work on. It's like sometimes better with the bonnet open, sometimes not. But what I did notice is, oh, that was my head. The fuel pressure gauge here was only reading one. Now, I think it may be faulty, but I can't quite see what it's, what the readings are. Have a bit better look later, but it's only reading up around the one mark. So whether, we just need to suss that out. Um, of what is going on there. But we're definitely going to get rid of this. I don't like these filters. So this is one of those filters i think they're the ones that everyone says burns your cars down because they leak so we're going to get rid of that i think for a start i think i've got a good one in the shed then i think our next port will be if we undo these these are like it's pretty hard for you to see i'll bring some light up in a minute but these are your inspection ports for your float level so i think we'll look at those where the float level is actually set and this on the top up here that little adjuster nut and screw is how you adjust the float level on these carbies. So I think we'll check that out and see where our float level is for a start. Then we'll turn the pump on again and see where it is with that. Now, we could just, I could be correct on my original diagnosis of it being a running out of petrol condition, not a flooding condition. Now it did flood when we tried to leave the car event, but I did give it a pump accidentally. Now, I probably didn't need to do that. So whether that was, I might have even given it two pumps, I don't know, but whether that was enough to flood it, obviously it was, but whether that was the cause of the flooding condition or we have some other things in there. But to me, so if we rewind and I'll fill you in on the whole story, if you didn't see last week, it is on a hill, especially it does it it breaks down it feels like it's running out of petrol it's been coughing backfiring through the carby it also does it now it's doing it on the flats i can coast along with limited throttle when it's okay but as soon as i ask a little bit of it then it will do the same it will cough and splutter and feel like it is running itself out of fuel so that was my initial thought was that it's running out of fuel and as far as i know Carby backfires happen when it's running too lean, which is when it's running out of fuel. I've had a few people say to me that I'll have the same faults, I don't know what the word is, but I'll have the same things happening if it's flooding itself. It will feel like it's running out of petrol. So I'm not quite sure. I spoke to the old owner yesterday. He rang me about my, one of my cars and he said that he just messed with the fuel pressure reg. I think we'll definitely get rid of that filter because I don't like it, I don't trust it. I know they're, I'm pretty sure they're those ones that that leak and have burnt a lot of cars down. A lot of people hate them, those glass filters. So I think we'll just put a standard little throwaway $10 fuel filter on for a start. And I think we'll start. He, the old owner also said he was being, he's had some issues with the rear bowl on the back carby. So I think we'll start with that one and go from there. But with that pressure gauge, giving us a funny reading 
that's not going to help, is it? Because we don't actually know what our pressure is going to be if that's just telling us one. So anyway, we might have a play with that. So I'm pretty sure if we turn the screw down on the fuel pressure reg, it picks up the pressure. So we'll have a look at that. Maybe we'll build a, maybe, so we'll just go one or the other. We'll check the float level, then we'll just go, either add more pressure, or take more pressure. We're just gonna have to do it, take it for a drive, do it, take it for a drive. So anyway, it's enough talking. Let's try to do some more diagnosing. Well, hopefully you can hear me. The whole shed's vibrating. <laughs> anyway, we had no leakage happening on the top with the fuel pressure. What I've done is, I changed that silly filter out, put another one in. Now it wasn't brand new, but it was still very good and clean. We put another filter in, and straight away, when I started it, it was idling up. It was idling a lot different than what it normally does. So, I don't know, it actually sounds pretty crisp at the moment. So I haven't checked floats, but... Okay, so we're just going to adjust the rear float bottle. So, bowl. So there's a screw that goes in here. We've just taken out. Now that's like your side inspection. Basically, what we want is when the fuel pump is running, we want no fuel coming out of this hole. But basically, if we give the car a tiny little rock, it's a tiny little rock. We have fuel coming out. So we want it right on the bottom of that. So not coming out. Unless we give the car a little rock, then we want it to come out. Now to adjust that, you've got this screw at the top that you crack. You've got a 5 8 nut here that if you go clockwise, you will lower the level. Or anti-clockwise, this way, will raise the level of the float. So you crack this, adjust the nut, retighten, test. So if you've got it coming out, you crack it down, 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 give the car a good shake to empty it. The fuel pump can pick the level up till it's not coming out until we give it a shake, then it comes out. So we've got one here, we've got the front bowl one here, exact same setup, and then the same on the other carb. So now yesterday I turned this on, I took this out and turned this on, and as you can see, without the pump nothing's running out but when the pump's on it was coming out so this rear float was way out now i've just taken a quarter turn out of the nut we're about to go turn the pump on and see and we'll adjust this till we get it right we'll check all the others and that will be our first port of call now there could be an issue with the power valve on these that they seeing it has backfired they could have been blown or something and we're going to have to probably get a new pressure gauge for our regulator as it's it's not reading accurately enough because it's, it's too it's 140 psi we want a 15 psi so we can dial that in perfectly but let's just adjust these because we definitely know this bowls out and we'll go from there so we have the pump on at the moment and at the moment nothing is coming out so at the moment it's like it's a little bit low so let's put this on well there we go we're starting to get some there let's just dry that up Alright, so there we've got it shaking. When we shake it, it comes out. So I think that one is not too bad. So let's quickly check this front one. Oh, 
Oh, it's very tight. All right, look now, we're starting to get some out. Is that just from me shaking it? Okay, look there, we've got it coming out all the time now. Okay, that's because our pressure rig's wrong. Issue. So if we see what happened then, as you can see now it's sitting there right, we've taken the fuel pump off and you can see it's up high now, okay. So what's happened is I think our pressure regulator is set to much pressure. So eventually it pushes past the needle and seat. So we've got an issue there. We've also got an issue with these not wanting to come out. So we're going to have to play with these a little bit as well. Get it. They are so tight, I don't know what I'm going to do there. They should not be that tight. Okay, so we're back. Now, what we've done is we really struggled to get that float level down to stop it coming out of here. And I think that our pressure reg is not any good. I don't know. I've backed the pressure reg right off, and I still can't get the gauge to drop. So I took three or four turns out of it to drop the pressure. The gauge still isn't working, so I'm going to go and replace the pressure regulator because it looks like it's just a cheap eBay one. So I'm going to put a new pressure regulator on it with a proper gauge so that I can get that adjusted correctly. I think we may just be running. It's got too much pressure going in and it's bypassing that little seat, but we just had it running then, and then I adjusted this float level more. So I've taken quite a bit out of that rear float in the end, and I got it to where it was just the motor shaking like that was was throwing a little bit of fuel out. So I got it pretty good. But when I just had the fuel pump on initially, I'm sure it was on long enough to fill the bowl. I had it pretty good. Now I've got an, an extra, probably a good turn or more onto that, onto that nut since where I had it first set. So it was set pretty good. Then it seemed to all of a sudden it was like it started to bypass the needle and seat. Okay, so I've been thinking about it and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into town and get a new fuel pressure regulator. There's a Holly one for like a 120 bucks or something. And we'll get a new 15 PSI gauge. I think that's 40. So we'll go get them, put them on, then we can adjust that so we know for a fact that we're running 6 PSI for a start. Then I think we'll have another little look at that float level on that rear bowl and see where it's at. And at that point, I think we may take it for a drive and see what it's doing then. So anyway, and we'll get a brand new filter while we're there. So see you when we get back. Okay, so we are back from town and this is what we got. We got this Holly fuel pressure regulator, this one here. So this will be our in, our out, and our gauge will go in there. So we've got a fitting go in there for our gauge and we've got two new fittings for that one day we might change them to the proper screw on ones we've got this little 15 psi gauge to put in it so we'll know exactly what so here's our other one that we took off as you can see that was 140 psi gauge so we're not going to ever be able to work out what was going on there one and two it's obviously a fuel injection regulator so it probably just probably wouldn't wind down low enough i'd say maybe so i think this pump from memory is 4.5 psi to nine there you go 4.5 to nine psi so that one will be perfect we'll set that at about six and we'll go from there and we bought ourselves a brand new filter because the other one that i put on wasn't the big hose size it was the next size down but it wasn't leaking but yeah we've got a new one of them one to put on just a cheap plastic one's fine so we'll quickly set this up bolt it all up on the car we'll thread use some thread tape on all the fittings 
and we've got another little piece of hose we'll probably have to adjust change one of the bits of hose because this pump was set like that and it went straight in to the fuel line a little short piece that teed whereas this one will be set like this so we'll have to loop around like that so we've got a little bit of hose for that as well so i'll quickly get all the thread tape on this we'll get it bolted up and screwed up and then we'll turn the ignition on set the psi on our new gauge then i think we'll recheck that rear float and see if we can get it this time to be a bit nicer so fingers crossed then we might take it for a little spin up the street okay so this is what we've done We've just adjusted this to 6 PSI, so which is right there on the gauge. So with the motor running, it's running perfectly at 6. We had to modify the whole setup a little bit. Now we'll probably make a new bracket later. We'll just twi put a twist into this bracket. I think we'll make a new one later, but that's how we've set it all up for now. New filter, everything looking pretty good. But yes, I think we'll put a new bracket later on and we'll change it up but i'm thinking we may run some an lines and stuff for a lot of this later on so we'll worry about doing that there let's just get it running nice for now we'll pretty it up later we also want to get rid of this put a bung in there etc so we've got it running nicely at six psi now we just had it running so now we will close the bonnet and we'll come in from the top and we'll check that rear float again, see if we can't set that float. And if we can get that rear one nice, we'll probably look at the others. And if we can get them nice, should run should, properly, shouldn't it? Unless we've got some issues with the needle and seat could be leaking, or the power valve as well could be having issues. So we may have to pull that down later, but let's try the next step. Okay, we're back. So. We just did all the float levels. Uh, we could actually dial in the rear one now. So obviously 100% that fuel regulator, pressure regulator was no good. It was always too much pressure, which would have been, this is what I'm thinking, because to get the float level half correct with the other one, the float level was actually too low. So I think what was happening is it had that much pressure that it was actually opening up the needle and seat and you had to then set the float level really really low to get it to, to to be just on because of the fact that it was bypassing if that makes sense so that's why it was wanting to float all the time because it was float levels too high and the pressure's too high because it's bypassing but that's also why probably going up hills it felt like it was running out because I reckon it was because the float was so low. So I'm actually thinking we had a two pot system happening there, two fault systems type thing. So, anyways, we've got that set at six psi now. And when I put that on, the float level was way, 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 way out. I'd backed it off so much I had to put basically uh, at least a turn, maybe one and a half turns into it to get it to lift the float back up to have it so that when you just gave the car a little rocket it came out so we've got all them we checked all the others the front one i just raised a tiniest little bit the other two were pretty good so it's starting really easy it's sounding really crisp so i think i think we might have solved it fingers crossed we've solved it so yeah we'll, we'll take it for a drive tomorrow and I'm going to do some gardening with the boss now. So yeah, we'll take it for a drive tomorrow and um, we'll spin it around then. I'll finish off a bit of the body. We'll probably start doing some airbrushing maybe. But I think we fixed it. All right, we've just fired it up this morning. We're about to go for a quick little spin up the street, see what it's like. Straight away, it's different because it fired up, died. Then I had to, it would not ignite again. And I had to give it one pump to get it to fire. So straight away, that tells us that I think we might have stopped this flooding condition. So anyway, I know it's loud. Let's see what it's like.
how it's still doing it. Okay, so we are back. As you would have probably heard, probably heard the little backfire it did. Now it was quite cold at that point. And as you've seen, it didn't do it again. Now then I turned the camera off and I kept driving around for another 10 or so minutes up and down the hills and it was running fine. So we've got a few options that it could be. We could be slightly out of timing. We do want to change our fuel from, we want to get rid of this fuel out of the tank and put 98 premium in it, but I doubt it's that. It could be the accelerator pumps, but I think they're set pretty good. Or there could be a little bit of timing. Or it could have just been that it was still a bit cold. We're definitely different because when I started this morning, I actually had to give it a pump of fuel. So we've definitely got rid of that flooding condition that it was having. We've definitely improved that. We have taken a step forward, but we have, it, it wasn't breaking down like it did the other day. Like, well, the other day I, I nearly didn't get home is how bad it was. So it wasn't doing that, but it did have that one little, which you would have heard, that one little, little backfire. So, but at that stage it was still cold. We'd only driven up the street and down and went down there. So, and we only had it running here for 30 odd seconds or so before we actually left. So it was quite cold. So. At any rate, what I've now done is we've pretty much got the patina flatness. As soon as I go to record, the sun pops out. It makes it very hard to see, but we've just gone along on this side and done it. So in the camera, it still looks glossy, okay? But in real life, it is matte satin looking. And it doesn't show up the patina is good through the camera, but we've put it through on the edges along we've actually just done some little misting in there okay we just had our memory card get full so as i was saying we put more patina on the side the dusting stuff you guys can hardly see but we've done a more along this top edge and if i stand in the shade it looks a bit better uh, but you cannot tell that it is satin we've done along here we've put a bit down in the doors along the door jams etc we actually darkened up a few little patches on the bonnet which again you're struggling to see we've done this around this guard and headlight area so yeah we've done added quite a bit more than we had last week it's it really the, the lights in the camera just do not show it eh? no matter where i put the car or whatever until maybe we get it down in the shed but it actually looks pretty, pretty good through naked eyes as opposed to the camera. So it is, just imagine it is just fully satin, matte satin. So anyway, I'm pretty happy with the way the patina is looking at the moment. All the boots all done, you know, we've done all patches down in here. So it's done everywhere now. 
We haven't touched the roof. That will be next week. We're going to lace up the roof. We're going to scotchy that back and lace that up. So now our next step is, I think we may attempt a little bit of airbrushing on these letters. So, fingers crossed we can pull that off. So I think I'll go and see and try if I can find a decent colour. Okay, so we have been airbrushing, and seriously, I don't know what it is with this camera. I'm gonna try something right now because it doesn't hardly show any patina, and it doesn't even show this outline, and this outline stands out like anything. So we'll just, I suppose that's better. we we'll just change the zoom on you. So as you can see, we've just, we actually freehanded it in with the airbrush, and then we've scotched it back a little bit so we've got these two, our little battery compressor has ran out of oomph and has to go and charge. But hopefully you can see in there, I know the light's still not really giving you the exact look. But it does look a lot more satin here than it did out there in the sun. So you can just have a quick walk around so you can actually see. We've got a pretty grungy looking pretty dark this side's probably maybe even a bit darker than the other side uh, because our sign writing here is more faded off so the whole car obviously got more sun this side is what we've gone to try to replicate so it actually looks I know I've said it a hundred times, but it looks so much better in person than it is through the camera lens. But that's probably as good as we're going to get to show you. But if you just really mat down what you're seeing, that's what it looks like in the flesh. It is no, see, so here, all this shine that you're seeing, there's none of it in person. So. It's actually looking pretty cool and I'm actually, this stands out a lot more than it looks and I think it actually really helps to make these look like they were, like it is sign writing wearing off. So, yeah, it's really helping the look I feel. Now, I'm not sure if I'm going to shadow it or not. Um, and that's the colour, it's like a burgundy it's a weird color it's like it's something i mixed up one day it's like a burgundy reddy burgundy browny color so anyway we'll continue with that and we'll see what happens
Okay, so we are back and we've done all our airbrushing now and scuffed it back. As you can see, we've sanded through a bit on this one and we actually added some little water stains in as well around the place and we went along on any of the burn through edges and just put a little bit on them and zushing along the front here we've got the, the hemi turned out pretty well so i have been humming and harring about humming and ha ring about doing a shadow actually I quite like the look of the hemi but doing a black shadow on the back so here's the other side um, definitely looks a bit better with the outline you can see more of the little drips etc that we did I think they look pretty cool let me stand back and some more over here so this way this side's pretty dark and grungy on this side We actually added a lot of patina all up. So if we come back and get an overall of the car, it's definitely looking a bit different. And on these letters, as you can see, we actually sanded a bit of red off. Because remember, this is reversed. So we're making out the cream is the sign writing wearing off. So we actually rubbed a bit of them off bit of the burn back into that to pronounce that a bit more I think it's not bad come around to the boot we've got all the patina up on there like we did down in here across the back so all in all I think I think we sort of I think we got it looking pretty cool and like I've said this stuff is a lot darker then it's showing on the camera i'll zoom it in boom so that's closer as you can see the the writing has that nice border the patina looks pretty grungy doesn't it it's pretty cool i still don't like them no matter what i'm never gonna like them but so i think we're looking pretty great it's really nice and grungy in there we that darkened up the bonnet quite a bit. Now it's dark in here and I think this is the best light to try to see it in because if we put it out in the sun or whatever, it pops all sorts of different weird colours. We'll stand back a bit here. Try to get you a bit of an overall. So this side's not quite as dark. It's still dark though. That's what we've done. I'll call that some sort of success. Now, here's, I'm going to throw you as a question. On this back bit, I'm humming and harring about shadowing it. So doing a black shadow off of each letter. So, you know, like, as in we do the left and the bottom of every letter in black. I'm humming and harring about doing that, and it's probably be a uh, half inch thick little shadow to make it look a bit three-dimensional I don't think I want to do it to the to the Hemi just to the back one so give me some feedback on that and I know there's one person who watches this Eastern Hot Rider John John if you're watching which you probably are he knows everything there is to know about drag racing and gases and everything so tell me what class this was in would be in because i may drop that in the comments on me john because i may put that somewhere on the car if we can because remembering i'm going to raise the front okay so yeah and where that would have to be we can't do it on the roof but <laughs> so anyway i think we got the body looking pretty cool uh we got the car running pretty good took it for another little spin this morning and 
it uh, purred like a kitten. So we're very close with that. I don't know if we're perfect, but we're very close. If anyone knows, blown 392 Hemi timing where what you think it should maybe be at. Give me a ballpark because all I can do is do where the timing is now, but what it probably should be set at. If someone could drop me a comment on that as well, that would be good. Um, I think we're very close. I may need to adjust the accelerator pumps a little bit. They actually feel pretty good as in the way they're set. You know, there's a little bit of movement there. They are touching. They're pretty close, but maybe a little tiny little bit might help uh, because reviewing the footage of that little cough I had the other day, it was at the bottom of the hill, and it was as soon as I touched the throttle, boom, it gave me one. So um, maybe the accelerator pump might need to come on a little bit quicker or something. Other than that, we're very close. I'm looking at different wheels. I think I want to change wheels. Uh, I've got a style I like. I think the wheels are okay, but I don't quite think they're right, if that makes sense. So they look all right, they look okay, but I just don't think it could look better with different wheels. We'll zoom back again. Yeah, I just think different wheels may make it look even better. So I've been looking at some different wheels. Just got to measure our backspace offset arrangement and C. I have found a nigh really cool set, but I think they might the offset might be a bit wrong. So we'll see how we go. No rush on that. And next week we are gonna do the roof. We are going to I bought the lace today when I got the lace. Just gonna go get another batch of clear tomorrow. And then and some new scotchies because I used them all and we'll scotchy up this roof and I'm gonna lace work the roof and I've got some Pretty cool little plans. Now, of course, we can't mask up on it, so we can't do what I was going to do, but I think I can still make it look pretty prick. So we're gonna do that next week. This video, we'll lace work the roof. And other than that, I think we're going okay. So, drop your comments, what you reckon with the body. If you think we've improved it. And with all that said, Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next week.